let's leave Indian Mounds Park, Quincy, Illinois, and go search for the Serpent Mound. Let's take the evidence we have and throw it on the table. Let's look at an article saying how Mr. Pete made a discovery this summer, which is interesting. He found a serpent mound near Quincy, Illinois, similar to the serpent mound in Adams County, Ohio. It measured 1,500 feet in length and represented the serpent in 15 folds lying along the top of the bluff. Next is a large article that I took a picture of on my phone. This article has a lot of information and I will let you pause the video to read it for yourself, but I will point out the key features and facts. It was found six miles north of Quincy, Illinois, on the Carthage Road where Rock Creek breaks through the bluffs, one half mile north of Rock Creek Station. He states, a cleverly defined rattlesnake lies coiled along the ground following the lines of the bluff. Also, we have the interpretation of the entire area drawn out by Mr. Pete. This shows the Rock Creek on the left with the road bridge and the railroad bridge. So using that information and knowing we're six miles north of Quincy, I grabbed an old map and looked for the Rock Creek. I wanted to see the maps as he's seen them in his day. There's also another one that I found, and these are county maps, and they show the same. Let's go down to the river. This is the old Indian trail that used to lead to the Indian village in Quincy, Illinois. If you notice, it's a nice light slant down the bluff to the Mississippi. Once here, you can turn around and really see the bluffs. To stand up there and look out is spiritual. This is the Mississippi, where they fished, hunted, and lived their whole life on these banks. With the information we have, let's zoom down to the area that Mr. Pete spoke of. And now we see Rock Creek, the road, and two bridges. Here are the old maps to compare. This is an exact match. Here is the old railroad bridge, and here is the bridge that would be Carthage Road on the map. And of course, here is Rock Creek. Let's go on the bridge. This old bridge was placed a long time ago. You can tell by looking at it that it's old. It's all rusted. I don't know the last time it was ever worked on, but it's still pretty sturdy. When I stepped on it, I was expecting it to kind of shake. But it was solid and looked like it was lined with concrete. Blowing under it, is Rock Creek. This would be a great place to camp. I can almost see the natives surviving with this natural resource that is Rock Creek. And as you look around a little more, you realize how magical and peaceful this place was and how important it must have been to the native Indians of the land. So let's take our evidence and look on the map. So it's just south of Rock Creek. And let's turn it so we have a good representation of the area he's talking of. Let me measure, he said it was 1500 feet in length. So let's put our cursor here and drag this over until we can get as close to 1500 as possible. Let's pull the old drawing that Mr. Pete did of the serpent and place it over the area. 
matching the tail and the head to 1500 feet. That is a very good match for being a drawing from 1891. The curvature from the snake lines up with the bluff. Now I wanted to do another experiment. Using Google Earth I was able to change the images through different years. If you see anything standing out tell me. This experiment I believe was not conclusive but maybe you watching can see something and if you can I would love to see your comments. I want to show you some more evidence I found compelling. But first, take a look at this. I just thought this was interesting, how this discoloration is kind of rounded, which would be the tail of the snake. Or not. But the evidence I was wondering about is this lake. This lake sits higher than the creek. Why was that made? Was it made for the road to go through? It could have been. But it sits higher than the road. As if someone dug down through half the bluff till they hit bedrock. Let's go to Cahokia Mounds, Illinois. This is the site of a large Indian city. This site in the 12th century was larger and more populous than London, England at the same time. The mound towers over the valley. This will definitely be a video for the future. I've been here before and it will knock you over. The base of the pyramid takes up more square footage than the Great Pyramid in Gaza and from the top you can see all the way to St. Louis. But I wanted to look here for a reason. See these lakes here. These little lakes and the large one here. This was made by Indians digging and using baskets to carry dirt to make the mounds. There are many more mounds around here. They would carry the dirt over 3,000 feet to reach the mounds. So looking back over the evidence, it could be possible that the lake was dug out by the Indians to make the serpent mound. And as we pan across, you can see that the lake is standing on bottom, but the dirt is removed from the top as if someone cut half the bluff away to make the mound. Looking over the Mississippi River Valley. Just down the road, I shot my camera across and I could see the LaGrange Missouri water tower at this intersection. What a beautiful place. So let's see how far away that is from where I was standing. So there's the LaGrange water tower. And you get the pointer right on it and it's almost five and a half miles wide five and a half miles of food, hunting, fishing, farming, and living. This place was extremely special. Now driving from the same intersection that I actually shot over to LaGrange at with my camera, we are now heading north. And I'll go ahead and pull the map down and set it up here for you. And this is where we are on this map. Unfortunately, all I see is trees. But if you wanted to watch closer, if you see anything, go ahead and leave your comments. I'll let you ride the rest of this out but let me know in the comments. Do you think this Serpent Mound is real? 
are not. Thanks for riding along.